Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Hunt. I am the founder of thebovine.com, and I'd like to welcome you all for joining us today. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Lindsay Warden. Lindsay grew up on Warmont Dairy uh, in New Mexico and New York. I think there's been two locations there, uh, and uh, very active in the Badger Dairy Calf Club, and then uh, more recently has joined Holstein USA, and she was the project manager, manager for the development of the Enlight uh, platform. So she's a great person to uh, share with us today just how uh, to get the maximum out of the program as well as the use of with genomics. And with that, I will pass the control of the presentation over to Lindsay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Like Andrew said, my name is Lindsay Warden, and I'm the Executive Director of Genetic Services for Holstein Association USA. This is the first web webinar I've presented on this series that we're doing with Zoetis and the Bullvine, so I'll take just a minute to give a brief introduction of myself. I've been with the Holstein Association for eight and a half years now, uh, coming on board just a short time before genomics became commercially available to dairy producers, and I've had a lifelong interest in dairy cattle genetics and the Holstein breed. Like Andrew mentioned, I've grown up, uh, lived on my family's dairy farms in New York and New Mexico, and I did also attend the University of Wisconsin at Madison. So I've had the opportunity to experience the dairy industry hands-on from coast to coast, and I have a deep interest in helping producers use genetics and also now genomic information on their operations to develop a herd of cows that meet their individual goals. Most recently, in my role here at the association, I oversee our staff responsible for executing our genomic and genetic testing programs, as well as the Holstein Association's other value-added performance products that we offer for breeders. I've worked extensively over the past few years with the folks at Zoetis on the development and launch of Enlight, and now spend a lot of time talking with dairymen about how they can take advantage of the information provided by genomic testing and Enlight to improve their herds. So today's session is the fifth in our series. Previous webinars have laid the groundwork and provided an introduction into what genomics is, is and back that up with real world data to show the accuracy of selection based on genomics over the more traditionally available tools. Our last webinar covered the economics of genomics on the farm and today we're going to talk about the next step. What to do after you've made the investment in testing and now have your results back. What tools are available to help you make decisions and monitor your progress. Like Andrew mentioned, if you've missed any of the other webinars, they're recorded and videos are posted on the Bullvine webinar page that you can watch at your convenience. All right, I wanted to start by laying out our agenda for today's session. I'll start by giving a quick introduction into our Enlight genetic management tool and then spend some time walking you through the steps between the time you place an order and get your results. And finally, we'll spend more time going in-depth on the tools that are available to help breeders make the best use of their results and also measure the success of your farm's genetic advancement program using Enlight. First things first, let's talk about a few fundamentals that are important to understand when a dairy chooses to begin genomic testing. I will go over these at a pretty high level and then we'll spend a little more time on each topic as we go along. Being able to participate in the genetic evaluation system and receive genomic results for your animals begins with a sound on-farm official ID system. Animals must be identified with a unique official ID number, such as an 840 ear tag or a USDA steel tag. Next, producers need to analyze the situation on their farm and make a plan for how they will use genomic information that they're considering investing in. Does your farm have excess calves to sell? Are you interested in doing some embryo transfer or IVF work and want to work with your best animals and use the lowest for recipients? Do you want to more selectively use sex semen to try and ensure you're getting heifer calves out of your best animals? All of those situations um, are, are those that genomics can be a valuable tool, and there are certainly many others. It seems like every producer I talk to has a slightly different goal and plan for using their genomic information, but the important part is that they do have a plan. Once you've made the decision to start testing, the process is fairly straightforward. You collect the samples, send them to the laboratory for analysis, correct any genomic conflicts that might arise if needed, and then you receive your results. I've distilled that down into its most simple form, and we're going to spend a little more time talking about each of those steps here shortly. After receiving results, producers should use available tools to help analyze their results and make decisions about their animals, 
executing the plan that they initially decided on. So these are a few aspects producers need to think about when considering genomic testing. We're going to walk through each of them more now, from the time a test is ordered until a decision is made on the farm using the genomic results. The NLight Genetic Management Tool is at the heart of that process, a comprehensive portal that helps Holstein producers take control of their information. We're going to spend most of our time today focusing on NLight, so I wanted to start at the ground floor and make sure everyone knows exactly what NLight is. NLight is a unique tool that provides convenient, timely, web-based access to your herd's genetic information and can be easily accessed on a computer or tablet. It includes a variety of reports, graphing, and analytical tools to help Holstein dairy producers make more informed selection and mating decisions on their animals, speeding potential genetic progress in their herds. NLight is a collaboration between Holstein USA and Zoetis combining the strengths of our two organizations to create this powerful resource. With a shared commitment to dairy producers, both of our organizations recognize an opportunity to make the process of obtaining and utilizing genetic and genomic data easier and more efficient for Holstein breeders. Empowering dairy producers to make better decisions also helps meet our goals for Holstein breed improvement. Enlight is available exclusively to clarified genomic customers including Holstein USA members and Zoetis customers in the United States. Here's a quick preview of some of NLight's key benefits. NLight's a website, nlightdairy.com, which means that wherever you are, be it on the barn office computer, in your house on your, laptop, on your laptop at night, or in another state at a meeting, as long as you have an internet connection, you can always log into NLight and have access to the latest information that you need to make decisions. Holstein Herdbook data is at the core of NLight. It's the engine that fuels the whole machine. NLight displays pedigree and genetic data just as it appears in the Herdbook, meaning you always have access to the most up-to-date official data. The NLight database is refreshed every night, so when you officially identify a new calf with the Holstein Association, the day after she's entered into the Herdbook, you can view her information in NLight. And of course, we're also refreshing NLight every Tuesday morning as new genomic predictions are released, so the latest information is accessible for your animals sooner than ever before. We know that dairy producers are inundated with so much data today, be it herd reports, milk testing sheets, crop analysis reports, vet check, vet check results, or pedigrees, just to name a few, that it can be really hard to make sense of all that data and actually put it to work for you. NLight helps organize and display your genetic information in a way that you can be able to quickly make better herd management decisions, saving you time and also maximizing your investment. NLight does include a variety of intuitive ways to sort and work with your data right within the tool, but we do realize that some users will want to work with it in a different format. With one click, all of the reports in NLight are able to be easily exported as a spreadsheet so you can work with your data further in a program such as Microsoft Excel. Some reports and graphs are also able to be exported as PDFs or image files. We'll give you more glimpses into NLight's capabilities as we go through the webinar, starting by talking about how it can help you with animal ID. Before we talk about the actual testing process, let's start with animal identification and how that's a critical component of a genomic testing program. All animals being genomic tested must have a unique, official identification number in order to have an evaluation delivered. Official 840 numbers are the gold standard for animal ID in the United States, and those numbers can be printed on a variety of sizes and colors of ear tags, including options to purchase an ear tag paired with a tissue sampling unit, or TSU, which is a great option for herds who are testing most or all of their females. Animals should be tagged close to birth with dam and sire information recorded. For registered animals, it's especially important to make sure the number your animal is genomic tested under is their registration number. That unique ID number will be the key that links your animal to its official genetic evaluation within the entire U.S. system. 840 tags are meant to provide an animal with one number that can be used throughout their lifetime for a variety of systems, not only genomic evaluation, but also milk recording, registration, and more. Holstein USA does offer a variety of official ear tag options. If you're interested, you can call Holstein USA customer service or visit holsteintags.com to see all of the available options or place an order. 
Now, if you're interested in getting started with 840 year tags, an important first step to take is to get um, your, make sure you have your farm's premise ID number, which can be obtained from your State Department of Agriculture. You'll need to be sure and have that handy when you're ready to order. Just as important as being sure your animals have a unique official identification number is making sure that accurate information is submitted with your genomic test order. As part of the process, genomics will detect breed conflicts, parentage conflicts, and more, and those must all be resolved before a genomic evaluation can be delivered. Errors in identifying animals on the farm inevitably happen, and genomics can be a great tool to help sort that out, but unnecessary headaches can be avoided by taking the time to submit information correctly up front. NLIGHT makes the process of submitting official animal ID information and ordering genomic testing materials a seamless, one-step process, and I'll elaborate on that more in just a minute. Before we get into order submission in NLIGHT, I wanted to spend just a minute talking about sample collection, the three primary ways that producers can submit DNA for genomic testing. Tissue sampling units, or TSUs, are the most preferable way to submit DNA for genomic testing, and they're becoming more commonly used every day. TSUs are high-quality samples, they make for efficient lab processing, and also allow for entirely electronic data submission. If you're using TSUs, you can simply submit your order in NLIGHT and put your samples in the mail to the lab. As I mentioned before, TSUs can be paired with official 840 ear tags of all sizes, including RFIDs, which makes for a fairly foolproof system for producers. Simply tag the calf at birth and collect your DNA sample at the same time. If you are using TSUs, it's important to make sure you have your DNA samples collected prior to submitting your genomic testing order. Hair is also another form of sample that's still fairly common for producers who are primarily doing lower volumes of testing. When using hair as your DNA sample, the root bulbs must be intact and hair should be pulled from either the tail or the ear close to the head. Finally, a blood sample can be provided for analysis, but this is by far the least common method of DNA submission. So now getting more into NLIGHT, NLIGHT includes a module that streamlines the process of officially identifying your Holstein and ordering genomic tests into one simple process. Some of you may be familiar with the Holstein Association's Easy ID program, and NLIGHT works pretty similar to that. Producers who use an on-farm herd management software can import a file from their program, eliminating the need for manual data entry. Submitted animals may be either basic ID'd or registered with Holstein USA, enrolling them in the Holstein herd book and establishing their official ID needed for genomic testing. Next, producers can choose the type of genomic test they'd like to order for animals in the group, either the Clarified or Clarified Ultra. Other testing, such as pulled or beta casein A2, can also be added if needed. If you're using TSUs, you can also upload that sample barcode information and submit it with your order. Producers utilizing that option simply need to submit their order in NLIGHT, print the packing slip that NLIGHT generates, and then send the samples off to the lab. There's no need to wait for paperwork or fill out a separate order form. It's all taken care of in one step. Okay, so now that you've submitted your animals for genomic testing and the samples are at the lab, let's talk about what happens next. The Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding, known as the CDCB for short, is the organization that's responsible for calculating genetic and genomic evaluations here in the U.S. They perform a series of checks on a genotype when it's received from the lab before delivering a genomic evaluation back to the owner. If a genotype fails any of the checks, known as a genomic conflict, it can cause a delay in receiving a prediction. Despite that, it's an important process because having correct information is critical for the accuracy of the evaluation. In most cases, no problems are found, but when they are, there's a systematic way to resolve them and Holstein USA and Zoetis are happy to work with producers to make the process as painless as possible. If you placed your genomic testing order through NLIGHT or directly through Holstein USA, you will receive notification of any conflicts via email from Holstein. If you ordered your genomic testing directly through Zoetis, your report will come from them via email. At this stage, if your animals don't have any problems, you will not get any notification 
as they are just continuing to move on through the evaluation process as normal. So let's talk a little bit more about the genomic conflicts that a producer might have to deal with. When producers receive notification of a conflict, they sometimes feel embarrassed by the problem, but you can rest assured, if you can name it, we've seen it. Some of the most common types of conflicts that a producer might have would be cases where calves were unknowingly switched at birth, which would result in a sire and dam or maternal grandsire conflict, breedings that were incorrectly recorded, resulting in a sire conflict, or a simple mislabeling of DNA samples submitted to the lab, or any number of other data entry or recording issues. Genomics is an awesome tool because it makes it easier to resolve these conflicts than ever before. In the case where a parentage conflict is found between what is submitted by the producer and what the DNA tells us, a correct sire, dam, or maternal grandsire is usually able to be suggested, assuming they've been genomic tested as well. In general, the correction process can be done entirely via email for efficiency. A simple yes or no to suggested, parent, to suggested parentage is often sufficient in most cases. Results will not be delivered until conflicts are resolved, so it's important for producers to respond quickly to these notifications. That being said, it's even more important to be sure you spend the time with the information to be sure you give the correct answer. For example, if you assume calves were switched at birth and accept that parentage, but actually just your DNA samples were mislabeled or switched, you'll be using data to make decisions about an animal that aren't actually that animal's results. Both Holstein USA and Zoetis have staff trained to help producers resolve their conflicts and are always happy to provide guidance in working through the process. Now, let's talk about the fun part, getting your results. When you genomic test an animal, you get two sets of results. The first are what we call preliminary results, which are typically available 14 to 21 days after a sample is sent into the lab, assuming there's no conflicts or other sample errors. New preliminary predictions are released each Tuesday. They differ from the official genomic predictions as they do not currently have reliability values for any of the traits. The preliminary weekly evaluations are useful for on-farm decision making, such as cases where herds are eager to cull calves that they don't plan to raise as early as possible, but preliminary values should not be used for advertising or high-end marketing. The second set of results would be the final results for an animal, aside from future national genetic evaluations, of course, and they are delivered on a once-per-month a uh, once -month schedule, uh, which is set by the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding. Typically, samples received in the lab by the first of the month will be reported in the next month's release, which is usually the first Tuesday of the month. For example, we're getting into November now. Samples received at the lab by December 1st could expect their preliminary results two to three weeks after submission, and their final results would most likely be delivered the first Tuesday in January. Both preliminary and final genomic results are made available in NLIGHT, typically before noon on the day that they're available. Both Holstein USA and Zoetis also distribute results in a spreadsheet format via email to producers. So here's an example of a results spreadsheet that a producer would get uh, via email, but today we're going to focus on analyzing your genomic test results in NLINE. NLINE has a variety of features and tools for dairy producers to take advantage of, but in today's webinar, we're going to focus primarily on those related to analyzing your genomic results and measuring the success of your genetic improvement program. You can see in this screenshot that NLIGHT has several tabs running across the top of the screen that breeders can choose from. Before we get any further into demonstrating NLIGHT's features, I want to point out the User Guide tab. We're going to talk about a lot of different features today, and if you're a current or future NLIGHT user, I definitely don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Short tutorial videos for everything we will talk about today, plus a lot more, can be found in the user guide section. So be sure to check that out to make sure you're taking full advantage of all of NLIGHT's features. The main features we'll discuss today are the reports, which provide several different ways to look at your information. Let's take a closer look at a few of the reports now. The first report I'll show you today is the individual genomic prediction. 
This will look familiar to anyone who has tested through Holstein USA and received that PDF report for an animal via email. There are four columns that allow producers to view genomic PTAs and reliabilities and see how they have improved from traditional values. Here you can see the top of the report. We have sections for the major selection indexes, health traits, milk and components, calving ease, and all the type traits appear at the bottom of the report. Next up, we have the clarified report, which is the most comprehensive place to analyze genomic information on groups of animals. It has several tabs to help producers view the information that you're most interested in. So first, the core traits tab contains every PTA available for an animal on one page, including the major selection indexes and production traits, fertility traits, including heifer and cow conception rate, and more. The composite indexes tab includes all the major industry selection indexes, feed efficiency, fertility index, and the type composites in one place. Genetic conditions allow you to see all the genetic condition results, both haplotype and official results, if they're available. The type traits tab displays the type composite indexes plus STAs for all the linear type traits recorded for Holstein cattle. The parentage tab shows the genomic confirmed sire, dam, and maternal grandsire information when available. Okay, so you should see the, the mating file circle there along with the link to download it. So the mating file includes every PTA, STA, genetic condition, condition result, and parentage for all genomic tested animals. This file can be downloaded and shared with other companies a herd is working with and may be imported into different mating software programs. Each section of the report can be sorted, by one, sorted with one click by whatever traits are most important to you. There's options to filter the results right within NLIGHT, and the report can be exported to Excel with one click for further analysis. All right, next slide. Should be the genetic conditions report. Correct. <clears throat> all right, the final report that I want to mention is the genetic conditions report. This report has all of the major genetic conditions for Holstein cattle and allows producers to view the frequency of each genetic condition in their herd, as well as generate lists of animals based on their status. So this report can be used in a few different ways. When new conditions are identified, producers can use this tool to see which animals in their herd are carriers. A prime example of this was this past August when the newly discovered haplotypes associated with cholesterol deficiency. When new and favorable haplotypes like this are designated, CDCB and USDA are actually able to go back and analyze all previously tested animals and label them appropriately. Click, please. With the genetic conditions report, herd owners were able to quickly analyze their herd and see how much this new condition affected them, as well as make a plan for managing carrier animals. Producers can also use this feature to more carefully use bulls who are carriers of an undesirable haplotype or genetic condition. A list of carrier animals can easily be generated, so you can still use the bulls in the herd, but be sure to avoid mating him to cows who are also carriers for the same condition. Another analysis that can be done is monitoring the prevalence of undesirable genetic conditions in a herd and modify the breeding program accordingly. It's not recommended to completely eliminate a bull who is a carrier for an unfavorable genetic condition from the breeding population when he does possess other desirable traits, but if a producer discovers they have a high frequency of a certain condition, <coughs> excuse me, they may want to avoid using sires who are also carriers of that same condition to alleviate any concerns of possible carrier-by-carrier -carrier matings. The final way that I'll mention using the genetic conditions report is to help identify animals for additional testing. USDA and CDCB provide back haplotype information for every genetic condition, even those that have an additional cost to do the actual genetic test for that condition. The haplotypes are highly accurate, but they're not perfect. So the official genetic test must be done for traits such as polled, brachyspina, CVM, or others to know with certainty whether or not an animal is actually a carrier, and also to get that information labeled on official Holstein pedigrees or other official documents. Many breeders wanting to make the best use of their genomic testing dollars may choose only to test those animals who are carriers of the haplotype for a condition and thus highly likely to actually be carriers. All right, next slide, please. 
Yeah, I'm following along in your speaker's notes. All right. Uh, the overall goal of these tools in NLight is to help producers rank animals based on traits that are economically important to their individual operations, whatever they may be. Producers can rank animals based on major industry indexes like TPI or net merit. However, if those don't quite meet your individual goals, NLight also provides a tool that lets producers build their own selection index customized with traits that are most important to them, and those values can then be used to rank animals and make decisions. Using the Export to Excel feature in NLight is ideal for more intensively sorting animals into groups. I'll give just a couple examples of how some producers are using this today. Herds with a regular testing program who are selling their lowest genetic merit calves, heifers with calves, may just want to look at their youngest group of animals and sort through them. Another common use would be looking at a list of breeding age heifers, sorting them by your predetermined criteria, and splitting them into groups based on genetic merit. From there, different decisions can be made about each group, such as who to use sex semen on, who gets bred with conventional semen, or which animals might be best suited as embryo recipients. <clears throat> At the end of the day, the most important component of seeing results from your investment in genomic testing is applying that strategy that we talked about earlier that you initially developed. Both Holstein USA and Zoetis have representatives who work in the field visiting dairymen every day who are trained and able to assist you in developing and executing your strategy and meeting the goals that you've set for your genomic testing program and your dairy operation. <clears throat> All right, so we're nearing the end of the webinar. I just wanted to touch on how NLight can help producers measure the success of your program and the impact that different strategies can have on genetic progress. So NLight provides several graphs that users can use to evaluate their herd, including one which bench benchmarks a herd's genetic progress over the last 10 years for the major traits, including TPI, net merit, and the other core traits. We like to call this genetic progress graph a producer's report card in that it lets us analyze how well a herd is doing compared to the breed average and lets us evaluate areas the herd is excelling in, as well as identify areas that offer opportunities for improvement. You can think of genetic progress kind of like a 401k. The earlier you start investing in it and monitoring it, the more returns will compound year after year, and that investment can pay large dividends in the long run. Okay, moving on. The next few slides are going to show the impact that applying genomics more intensively in a herd can have on genetic progress. This first graph sets a, sets a benchmark for where the herd was before using genomic information in their mating decisions. We can see their annual genetic progress for net merit was about $35 per year, which is quite good. The gold line projects out to see where that we would expect them to be today if they continued utilizing their same breeding strategy, making steady genetic progress over time. They're a well-managed herd who already had a sound breeding strategy that they were applying and seeing positive results from it. Starting in 2009, this herd decided to start using more genomic tested young bulls as service sires, and we can start to see the effects of those breeding decisions in 2010. Between 2010 and 2012, they're starting to see a $50 per year increase in net merit values, and the slope of the purple line projecting their further progress is even steeper. They're still making positive genetic gains, and now at a faster rate than before. In 2013, the same herd started to apply genetic selection on their females using genomic information, as well as continuing to use genomic young bulls. We see even more and faster genetic progress using genomic information on both the sire and female side, with their trend between 2013 and today being around a $74 per year increase in net merit dollars. Comparing the gold and silver lines, you can see the gap between where the herd <clears throat> using genomic testing and female selection is, as compared to where they would be if they did not adopt the new technology. It's nearly a $170 PTA net merit gap in their actual genetic merit versus what was originally projected using pre-genomic progress over just six years. Comparing the actual values, that's approximately $340 more per animal in its lifetime, a significant difference. This herd has been doing a good job with their breeding program for several years, 
and you can see how continuing to push themselves and taking advantage of new technology has taken them to entirely new heights. This is just one example of what this herd saw applying genomic information at different levels in their genetic advancement program. Individual results that herds will see will of course depend on their own strategies and how intensively they apply genomic selection. There is also the opportunity to see even more dramatic results using advanced reproductive techniques such as ET and IVF on top animals and using lower animals for recipients that could push the envelope for genetic progress even further. <clears throat> as we get toward the end of today's webinar, I wanted to provide a little more information for anyone who might be interested in learning more about how to get started with NLight. Any producer who is genomic testing their animals <clears throat> is officially eligible to use NLight. Access to NLight is free as a benefit of clarified genomic testing, or genomic testing with clarified, and once a herd is enrolled, all testing order will be genotyped by Zoetis using one of the clarified products. The animals must also be officially identified with Holstein USA, either basic ID or registered, to be viewed in NLight. This ensures the most accurate and up-to-date information is always available. As I mentioned earlier in the webinar, all of these things can be completed in one step during the ordering process within NLight. <clears throat> all right, so the NLight enrollment process is fairly straightforward. If you have previously genomic tested through Holstein USA, you should call Holstein Customer Service or talk to your Holstein USA regional sales representative to get enrolled. If you have previously tested through Zoetis, your local Zoetis representative can help you enroll. If you have not yet genomic tested and want to get started, or if you have previously tested through another provider, you can talk to either your Holstein or Zoetis representative about how to get started. Once your enrollment is processed, your herd data will be available in NLight the next morning. A final important note that I always mention is that nobody has access to a producer's information in NLight without their express consent. We hold our customers' privacy in the utmost regard, and you can rest assured that it continues to be protected even in this fast-paced information age. However, if you would like to engage your Holstein USA representative or Zoetis representative as a genetic consultant, you will be able to grant them permission uh, to view your information during the enrollment process. Okay, so before we wrap up today's session, I just wanted to give a preview of our upcoming webinar topics. The next webinar in our series will be on December 2nd with David Erf from Zoetis, where he will be talking about using genomics as a better al selection alternative to size-based phenotypic measurements such as average daily gain and providing some compelling data to support that information. To kick off the new year, Dr. Dan Weigel will present on January 6th, 2016, about how genomics can help producers make genetic progress not just on traditional traits, but also those with low heritability. So with that, I thank everyone greatly for their time and attention this afternoon, and I'll turn it back to Andrew and be happy to answer any questions from the audience. Open them back up while we're going here. Um, the first question that came in is, is this system uh, only available if the animal is registered with Holstein USA? If I purchased a heifer from Canada, am I able to bring her into NLight? So I'm going to assume that this person is a Holstein USA customer who purchased an animal from Canada. So hopefully you're planning to transfer your heifer. Um, if not, Holstein USA is happy to help you with that. But um, yes, as long as, she's in, in, as long as she's owned by your Holstein USA account, you can view her in NLight. So if you purchase a heifer in Canada, bring her here to the U.S transfer her into your Holstein account, she will show up in NLight. Okay. Now this one's for someone, uh, the example that came in is from Costa Rica, but there's a few questions this way. Um, if I'm not uh, from the U.S., but I do genomic test on the U.S. base, am I able to use NLight? So as of today, NLight is for U.S. customers only. Okay. That answers that question. Is it possible to register, or is it, do I, when I register my animals, does it, or when I genomic test them, does it automatically, or can I have it automatically do the other part? So that if I fill out, say, the registration for the genomic test, does that automatically get them registered with Holstein USA? Um, yep, that was the, um, what I showed in NLight there. In one process, you can register your calf and order your genomic test in one step. Um, that's definitely, definitely possible. 
and just this is my follow on question on myself, does that go for heifers from IVF and flushing as well? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Any you can definitely um do the registration application and order the genomic test at the same time. Okay. Um, and then I have another question that came in. Is there a mating program or mating recommendations that are built into Enlight? Um, so there's nothing built into Enlight um, as of today, but Holstein does offer our Redbook Plus Multimate software. I know several AI companies have software programs um, that you can export data out of Enlight and import them into those softwares, um, but it's not, not built into Enlight today. And then uh, I heard you mention, and this is, I think, what spurred this little question that just came in it now. Am I able to share access to my information to my herd consultants and advisors? If so, how? So um, right now, the only consultants that you can grant your Enlight access to um, with their own accounts would be Holstein, US, Holstein USA and Zoetis Reps. Um, that, that those are the only people that can set up their own accounts and get access to multiple herds at one time. Okay, so that explains that. I wondered because I was curious myself that way. Okay, with that, I think that's all the questions we've had today. I want to thank Lindsay uh, for doing a great presentation, especially uh, when you hit those technical glitches and you, then you're flying with no eyesight and having someone else operate for you. Uh, you did a, a great job. Uh, made it very easy for me to help you because you have very thorough and detailed speaker's notes, um, so it helped me uh, follow along and work with you. So I do appreciate you taking the time and doing such a great job with us today. If someone had any other additional questions or needed to get further information or get started, is there someone you could direct them to or someone uh, they could ask you, or how would you like to handle that? Yeah, sure. Um, they can call. Uh, probably the easiest thing would be to call Holstein Customer Service. Uh, that number is 800-952-5200, and they can tell the customer service agent that they would like to talk to somebody about Enlight. Um, they can talk to me directly or email me. My email is uh, l-w-o-r-d-e-n at holstein.com. And for those of you that are watching with us live just now, I've entered that email address in the uh, chat box uh, as we go along. So with that, I thank everyone for attending, and we do encourage you, as we mentioned, that there is the next webinar in this series that takes place on uh, December 2nd, as Lindsay mentioned, uh, uh, about moving beyond phenotype genomics versus size-based traits. So we look forward to you uh, joining us for that session as well, and have a great day, everyone.